<laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Amanda. <clears throat> well, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I know there's lots of great TV shows and other things to do, and I, I'm really touched that you decided to come and spend your time with me. Because while I was checking this octopus out, he was reaching his ten or she was reaching his te their tentacles out and touching my arm, and I thought, wow, this is incredible, and I, and, and I know nothing about this. But I just tried to, to build that relationship. And so from that, I, I wanted to get myself small somehow. And I wanted to get into that, those tide pools and be able to swim around and be with all of these animals. And that first time that I got underwater, that first time that I was actually breathing underwater and I was okay, was like fantastic because you're weightless and you're just floating around and Here's my tide pool friends. Here they are in the reef, and somehow I got to make myself small and see and be reunited with all of these little animals that I had been so in love with when I was a child. You know, another thing I, about these animals is that I, I really believe that, that they have some emotion, um, and they're not just these mindless beings. You know, this guy, I felt, was as interested in me as I was in him. Uh, you know, this guy's like, hey, what are you doing down here? Why are all those bubbles coming out of your head? You got any food? You know? It's a sheep head. These guys start off as females when they're young, and depending on the uh, community that they're in, whether the, that community needs more males, they will then, ch some of them, the larger ones, will change to males. So uh, that's an interesting thing to be able to do. <laughs> I think this guy is probably from Hollywood or something like, this is my best side, no problem. That, that looks the best, you know. He's called a ling cod and uh, he looks prehistoric almost, you know. And again, you know, this, this communication from one world, my world, to his world or his to mine, uh, I feel is honored to be able to be with these animals and for them to, again, accept me in a way to where they're not swimming away or they let me, you know, take their picture. This guy looks like my Uncle Henry, who used to follow me around as I was cutting his grass, you know, and, hey, Richard, you missed that part, you know, you missed that one, oh, that one too, you know, he was kind of a, kind of a crabby guy. So it not only reminds me of situations or buildings, it reminds me of people that I've known, <laughs> but, I've learned a little bit about fearlessness from, from, from these two guys because this is what they're looking at. Now, imagine if you walked outside your front door of your house and you saw something like that that's about 150 times bigger than you. Well, I'd be going back in the house. Now, this is an abalone. I don't know how many people have seen an abalone or tasted abalone, but I thought, what is it like to Look your food in the face. He looks a little menacing. He's not very big, but he looks pretty big. And those are his eyes there, the, uh, the white little um, areas. Now, you gotta have a picture of a shark. It's called a soup fin shark, which is unfortunate for that name because they do use it for soup fin uh, soup. But you know, this guy, they usually swim in packs, and I saw about five of them that day. But, you know, they move with such intention and such uh, grace. But, you know, you're thinking, oh, okay, here comes a shark, and he's coming in like this. And then he sort of looks at you and goes, oh, sorry. And then just, I mean, that's sort of the look on his face. He's like, oh, sorry, did I bother you? Didn't mean to. Because this is called a black sea bass, and this guy's about as big as I am, or a little more. And these... These little copepods, some of them were scurrying around on his face while I was taking the picture. And it's just, oh, you know, you want to reach over and like pick them off for him, help him out, you know, or then you start feeling your face. And, oh, <laughs> did they come over to me? You know, you should always look at the world at all different angles. And these guys are the masters of it. They're the most gregarious, wonderful, fun-loving, uh, animals I probably have ever been around and fast you know they're 30 miles an hour they're like puppy dogs with fins 
and they just, you know, like to play with you. And the, the thing that you have to do if you want them to stay around is you have to play with them. You have to twist and turn and bob and weave and blow bubbles, and then they'll stay around because they're interested. If you don't do that, if you're just there to take a picture, they're like, I'm going to the other diver who's more fun than you are. And this guy was digging in the sand and bringing it up to me. The, uh, probably the most important lesson I've learned from all these beautiful creatures is that they have a place on this earth as much as we do. And us being the stewards of this beautiful world, uh, we have a responsibility to keep it healthy both for them and for us and so that both of us can reach our full potential. So I want to thank all of you for coming here tonight because every all the the door money and, and much of the sale of the books goes to the Sea Center for the continuing education for our next generation to help protect these guys and to help um, protect us, really. You know, it kind of goes hand in hand. So he says, thank you, waving goodbye. So thank you very much. <laughs>